Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to uh, make a little tutorial or how-to video um, diagnosing a short in brass steam locomotives. Um, shorts, as you know, is one of the most annoying issues in brass steam locomotives because again, this entire engine is brass, so uh, everything conducts electricity, so it's always a pain when something touches something it shouldn't touch and cause a short. Uh, shorts are usually a nightmare to try and diagnose and try to figure out where it's, uh, what, you know, what's causing it. But once you do figure out what is causing a short, uh, it's very usually very easy to repair. Uh, all you have to do is just take some insulation of some sort and make sure the two pieces don't touch. Uh, so yeah, generally easy to repair, very hard to diagnose. So yeah, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, real quick, I'm going to talk about some of the tools you'll probably find useful. Um, First off is one of these multimeters. Um, any multimeter will work as long as it has this mode, which is a continuity checker. Um, basically what this mode does is uh, whenever you touch the two leads together, it will beep. Like that. Um, and you could use this to, you know, touch to make sure the two polarities of the engine aren't, you know, in contact. They shouldn't be beeping because if they are beeping, then you have an issue, right? Because the two, that means that there's some sort of contact somewhere, which is no good. Um, so that's very useful in terms of trying to diagnose and figure out where the short's being caused. Also, just using your eyes and trying to figure out what's causing the short is very useful. And or shorting out your test track uh, power pack is always useful too. Um, I usually like to have some passenger cars with lights inside on the track. And so whenever the engine does short out, I could look at the, I could look at the passenger cars and make sure that it is not just the engine losing connection, but rather that there's a, there's a short going on. Because if there's a short, that means that the passenger lights are off. Um, whereas if the engine just simply lost power, then the passenger lights should still be on. So that is just something useful to tell. Um, besides that though, some other tools you'll need is some uh, Kapton tape. This is preferred, but if you don't have any, you can use electrical tape. This is just simply to as insulation material. Um, you might also find these KD insulating washers be useful. These are fiber and uh, excellent insulators for axles. Um, and lastly, you might find some sheet styrene or plastic of some sort. This is rather thick. I couldn't find some thinner styrene. Um, I know I have it somewhere, but I'm just too lazy to find it. Um, but yeah, some of this stuff is super useful in terms of trying to eliminate shorts. Um, so yeah. Also some black paint, screwdrivers, pliers, etc. will always be useful. So yeah, uh, let's try to... Uh, figure out where exactly shorts can occur now. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail as far as how to repair shorts. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You use some sort of insulation material, make sure the two pieces don't touch, and you're set. Um, so yeah, the harder part, as I said, is to figure out where the shorts are. And so I'm gonna try to uh, go through parts of a steam engine where I, you know, through my experience of working with my, you know, 30 brass steam engines, uh, where uh, I've experienced shorts in the, in the most common areas. Um, we're gonna, instead of going from most uh, common to least common, I'm instead just gonna simply go through like areas of the engine and hopefully you can find it that way. Um, this way I'm just trying to organize the video a little bit differently. And uh, yeah, so first off, uh, one trick I like to do is just simply take things apart until the short disappears. Um, basically, first, you know, you take the engine tender apart, put the tender on the track, make sure it's not shorting out, put the engine on the track, make sure that's not shorting out. And then from there, assuming the tender's okay, um, all you have to do is just start taking things apart from the engine. So you can take the leading truck out, take the trailing truck out, start taking drivers out, and eventually you'll get to a point where uh, you have nothing else on the track and uh, the short is gone. So that is always a very useful trick. Sometimes taking a shell off will help remove a short. Um, that sometimes does happen. Um, and you know, you gradually just take things off until you can narrow down what, what exactly is causing the short. And that is pretty helpful. Um, besides that though, uh, let's go into more specific parts. I'm gonna ignore the tender for the most part in these videos in this video because tenders are pretty self-explanatory. The only really thing that could cause an issue is if the wheel touches the insulated wheel touches the um, touches the exposed side of the of the truck. Um, but that is not very common. Um, but that is really the only thing I can talk about as far as the tender goes. Also, you gotta make sure the KD is if you're using a metal KD coupler, you gotta make sure you're using an insulated uh, um, coupler box, a plastic coupler box. Um, but besides that, tenders are very self-explanatory. All right, now onto engines. Uh, I'm gonna first talk about the the shell itself, and then we're gonna go to the drivers and then the leading and trailing trucks um, in terms of common issues that are caused shorts. So as far as the shell itself goes, um, the main thing to consider is that um, the drawbar, the drawbar screw, and then you know that little nut at the very top there, that is one. That is all one polarity um, and should be insulated from the entire rest of the engine. 
Um, also, one set of wheels, including the leading and trailing truck, should also be insulated from the engine um, because that is all one, you know, one polarity. And the other polarity is the other set of wheels and the entire rest of the engine itself. So, yeah, you want to make sure the drawbar. First things first, you want to make sure the drawbar is insulated from the frame. Um, usually, a brass engine, you will have a, um, a little insulation uh, washer or plug to make sure the screw does not touch any part of the frame. Um, so that is something to consider. Uh, also, you want to make sure that that screw doesn't go too far in. If it, if it goes too far in and touches the top of the shell, that could also cause some sort of short because, again, the shell and the drawbar should not touch. Um, one issue I've had... I'm gonna bring in this. This is a Sunset Pennsylvania Railroad H6 SB, by the way. Uh, this is a Sunset Pennsylvania Railroad H10. So one issue I've had with these kind of engines is the drawbar. The spring is too soft, and so certain during certain parts of the track, like especially uneven track, uh, the drawbar will lift. And as you can see, the drawbar can touch sometimes touch the uh, engine shell itself, which is a big no no. You do not want that. So if that is the issue, you can either use a stiffer spring, you can use a longer screw, you can simply use some tape um, or some uh, thin sheet of styrene put on here. And so this way, if the drawbar does touch, it won't touch the exposed brass shell. Paint sometimes works, but usually I avoid paint. Paint is not very, ins it's not a very good insulator because it's so thin. Okay, so that's it for the drawbar. Uh, the only other issue I have really with the, with the boiler shell itself is the uh, if you have an exposed wire inside, you know, when you're adding DCC itself, when you're adding DCC lights and whatever, you want to make sure all the wires are properly insulated, including the tender. Uh, you want to make sure none of that is touching any part of the frame because that can absolutely destroy your lights and decoder, which, which is very bad. So, yeah. Sometimes I've had an issue where if your engine's very long and there's not proper tolerances, um, where the pilot doesn't have enough, is not sitting high enough. Um, sometimes I have engines where the the pilot will literally touch the track uh, during uneven. You know, obviously when your track is uneven, uh, the front of your pilot will uh, touch the track. And if that is the case, um, you can use a you know Dremel and kind of scrape down and file down, sand down that pilot, the bottom of the pilot. Uh, but that's not great. It kind of ruins your detail. So instead, instead, what I recommend is if you use a thin sheet of styrene. Again, this is very thick. This is O30. Um, but if you use a really thin sheet of styrene uh, or tape, even you put it on the bottom and then you kind of paint it black and kind of hide it. That is a very effective way of uh, you know in insulating the bottom of the pilot. But that is something something that does sometimes occur, especially on uneven track. Okay, so that is it for the entire frame and chassis. Now let's talk about the wheels, which is. Let's be honest, that's usually the most common cause of a short. Um, so yeah, the drivers um, are pretty straightforward. There's not much, there's not too much you can do with drivers if there is a short. Um, the most common thing I've had with shorted out drivers is um, the brake shoes. Most brass engines either have no brake shoes or plastic brake shoes like on uh, this, well, this PFM United has no brake shoes, but um, a lot of PFM United and um, Max Gray, Tenshoto, etc. all have plastic brake shoes. Uh, whereas some, some of the Sunset, a lot of NJCB and a lot of Hallmark engines all have uh, brass brake shoes, like this engine, for example. And um, on the non-insulated, on the pickup side, it's fine, right? Because the brake shoe frame whatever and the wheel is all the same polarity but on the insulated side you do not want the brake shoe which is one polarity again to touch the insulated side of the wheel so on this engine for example you can see that this brake shoe is very close to touching this front truck um and also yeah and then these all look the rest all look okay um, but sometimes you'll have very tight clearances between a really thick brake shoe and the wheel itself and um, that you definitely want to look out for. It is very hard to spot, uh, but once you do spot it, you just look very closely. Uh, sometimes if the wheel is not perfectly circular, if it's like slightly ovular or, you know, elliptical, uh, when the wheels will move during certain parts of the rotation or if the you know wheel slides forward and back, um, it will cause a short. So if your short is kind of like all over the place, like random parts of the track, sometimes on curves, sometimes on straights, then you might want to look out for this because again, it could, it could be caused by part of the wheel rotation or even just the orientation of the track. Um, it could be caused by many things or even like if the wheels are sprung, right? Which usually they are on a brass engine, um, that vertical motion might cause a short in certain locations of the track and other times not. But Anyways, you want to look out for the brake shoe. Make sure the brake shoes are not touching any, uh, either the front or rear wheel on each brake shoe. Um, make sure that it's not occurring. Um, if it is, 
there's a few solutions. Uh, first off, you could just simply remove the brake shoe. I would not recommend this because I like the look of brake shoes. You could uh, take it off and then file down the front and or back um, to make sure that there's more you know, clearance between the wheel and the brake shoe itself. And uh, lastly, you can uh, use some, some sort of insulation. I like to use actually white glue for this, like gallery glass or some sort of white glue. Um, but you could also just use some you know, kind of like rubbery glue or even like some sort of really thick paint or even try using tape to insulate it um, by, you know, putting a really thick coat of it on the, uh, on the sides of the brake shoe. Um, that is definitely possible and I have used that te uh, technique sometimes on certain engines, um, but yeah. The brake shoes are t tend to be a pain because there's very little clearance. I recommend personally just to use a, 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 a Dremel or a file to kind of file down the end, the sides of the brake shoe so that it doesn't really touch the wheel nearly as much. It does kind of ruin the look of the brake shoe itself, but it's not really noticeable too much. And honestly, it's just not, it's not worth the hassle. Um, so, yeah. That is pretty much it for the driver. So sometimes you'll have issues where the insulation on the driver itself starts to break down. And if that's the case, good luck because I have no clue how to fix that. Um, if that happens, I usually just sell the engine off. Sometimes you'll have like zinc pest on the wheels and it will start to expand and that really thin insulation, which by the way is, a, you'll note by a very thin red, um, a very thin red gap between the tire and the die cast centers of the wheels. You can see there's a bit of red. I don't know if you can see that. But there's a little bit of red uh, in there, and that, that is the insulation. That is all the insulation there is on these wheels. So it is the insulation usually doesn't wear out, but if it does, uh, you'll have to replace that somehow. I'm not good at that. I cannot tell you how to do that because I, I don't know how to do it myself, but that is something to consider. Um, but that is pretty much it for the drivers. Um, there's, your drivers are usually pretty reliable. There's not that much stuff that touches. Um, I've also actually had issues where the inside of the... Uh, of the um, rods will touch the tires on the insulated side of the wheels um that is pretty easy to fix you just add some washers to kind of push you know have the drivers stick out further so that they don't touch the, the the tires of the wheels um but yeah so as i said drivers are usually pretty, pretty straightforward and lastly okay so the last thing we're gonna talk about is the leading and trailing truck these are the most common places where shorts occur um from my experience and with that we're going to bring in a pfm united k4 so um, yeah, there, there's a lot of places for the, um, the um, front and trailing truck to cause issues in terms of shorts. The very first thing, oopsie daisies, it's really blurry. What happened? The very first thing is uh, on the inside of a curve, say your engine's turning left in this case, um, the rear wheel can touch the front wheel. This can cause the railments and shorts. Uh, you, you do not want that. Also, if your engine's on a tight enough curve, uh, the wheel can touch the, um, the uh, cylinders. As you can see on this engine, there's a whole lot of exposed paint uh, due to the wheels probably contacting uh, the uh, cylinders, both on inner and outer sides of the curve, um, which can cause issues, especially if you have a, a you know, two-wheel leading truck. Um, that can cause many issues in terms of shorts. And the solution to that is um, you can either grind some of the cylinder away, which I would not recommend. You could put some styrene or some sort of insulation on here like tape. Um, or alternatively, and an easier method in my opinion, is simply use smaller wheels. You can find 28 inch wheels, 33 inch wheels, whatever the size wheels you have, just you know go down a, a scale and uh, you should be set. Um, that's usually the easiest way to do it. Doesn't look amazing, but honestly, you can't really tell the difference. So yeah, that is pretty nice. And um, another issue is the insulation on the uh, wheel itself. Um, these wheels are properly insulated, but again, on the not, on the um, side that's not picking up power. So in this case, it's this side. This side picks up power. This side's supposed to be insulated. Um, sometimes, uh, since the since the uh, frame of the uh, leading and trailing truck is connecting to the frame of the chassis, you do not want the insulated wheel to touch the frame of either the leading or trailing truck. And sometimes you'll have an issue where if there's not a, a good enough insulation here, uh, if you don't have a washer or anything like that, the the leading the wheel can make contact with the uh, frame of the leading or trailing truck. So in this case, as you can see here, um, there is a nice little washer there. Uh, which prevents the wheel from touching the uh, brass, uh, you know, frame of the trailing truck. Same with the front wheel, and that is good. On the leading uh, on the trailing truck here too, uh, you have also have the same issue. As you can see here, there's actually a nice little gap between the wheel and the and the frame here. I can actually push against the wheel, um, and you can still see that there's ample 
uh, insulation between uh, the frame, the outer frame and the wheel itself. But sometimes I have had issues again where the frame might come in contact with the tire or just part of the wheel in general. And that could be, a sh that, that could be an issue for sure. I can give another example here if I take out the H6. You can see that on the insulated side, again, you can see the uh, you can see the insulation here, the red side indicates that this side is insulated, this side should not touch the uh, engine. Um, you can see that there's a nice thick plastic washer um, on the leading truck to make sure that it does not touch the uh, brass uh, leading truck frame. Um, that prevents shorts. So yeah, those are, that, that, that is a pretty common issue in fact, actually. Um, so if you do have that issue, that's where the uh, these little insulated washers come in. Uh, you could just simply put a few of these on the, you take out the wheel, put some on the axles, and then it should provide a bigger gap between the wheel and the frame. So there you go. Uh, but that that is pretty much it. Um, I'm sure there are many other areas where um, shorts can occur on an engine. And if you do have those, I probably forgot a few. Um, please comment them down below. Maybe that will help someone out. Hopefully it will help someone out um, in case my suggestions did not solve your issue. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. That is through my experience of working with all my engines. Th those are the most common areas or, you know, basically all the areas where a shirt can occur. Uh, I try to be as thorough as possible with that. So hopefully this video helps someone out in diagnosing a short on their brass engine. Um, and yeah, so with that all being said, I will definitely be looking at the comments down below to make sure I didn't miss anything. And if I do miss anything, I'll pin those comments um, and uh, hopefully someone that will help someone out. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope everything made sense. Again, the actual installation process is very easy. If you have, if you guys have any additional questions, please comment them down below. I usually try my best to answer every question or every comment I have. So uh, yeah. All right. So I'll see you guys next time. Good luck on fixing your engine. And uh, yeah, take care.